Hi, my name is Marcus Ghosh. I'm a postdoc working with Dan, and I'll be giving some of the lectures throughout this course. In this first week, we're going to focus on neurons, which are thought to be the brain's primary processing units. We'll cover three topics, neuron structure, neuron function, and how we can model neurons mathematically and simulate them in code. In this first video, we'll focus on structure. We can think of both artificial neural networks and brains as computing input-output transformations. That is, they take input data and output decisions. For example, a trained ANN may take in images and output classes, and similarly, a predator may use its senses, like vision and hearing, to distinguish prey from other animals. In neuroscience, we call this the sensory motor transformation. But how do these systems compute these transformations? In ANNs, these transformations are realized by units, which sum their weighted inputs and pass them through an activation function like ReLU. In brains, the equivalent are neurons, which are not just simple points, but complex 3D structures like the neuron shown here. Just to give you an idea of scale, the human brain contains around 86 billion neurons. So what makes up a neuron? Like other cells, neurons have a fatty membrane, which separates their inner contents from their surroundings. Then inside, they're filled with a fluid known as cytoplasm. In their cytoplasm, you'll find things which are found in other cells, like a nucleus containing genetic material. And usually this sits in the neuron's main cell body or soma. But unlike many other cells, neurons act as information processing units. They receive inputs from other neurons via their dendritic tree, which is shown on the left, and then they signal to other neurons, muscles or glands via the axon, which is shown on the right. But while this is the sort of cartoon we often use, neurons are actually incredibly diverse. For example, this paper made detailed measurements from over a thousand neurons and concluded that there are around 70 types which differ in several features, including their morphology, which you can see here. Some of the neurons in blue look like the diagram we saw on the previous slide, but others, like those in pink, look quite different. And while you might assume that this complexity was reserved for, or even unique to, the human brain, all of these 70 neuron types, and actually this whole study, is focused on just one part of the mouse brain. So is this structural diversity just random? in other words, the result of noisy biological processes, or not? Well, in this paper, the authors analysed the morphology of over 10,000 real neurons from an open source data set, and showed that the balance wiring costs, that is the amount of material needed to construct the branches, and conduction delays, the distance between their cell body and their points of contact with other neurons. In figure A on the left, the black circles represent the soma or cell body of the neuron, green circles show the inputs, and the red circle shows a branch point. And what this figure shows is how it's possible to wire the connections from green to black in different ways. On the left is the tree with the minimum wiring cost, in the middle is the tree with the minimum conduction delay, and on the right is an intermediate tree. Now, as these two objectives, minimizing wiring cost and conduction delay compete with each other and form a Pareto front where improving one leads to loss in the other. This is shown in panel B where the x-axis is the wiring cost and the y-axis is the conduction delay and the front shows how improving one impairs the other. For example, decreasing the conduction delay leads to an increase in wiring cost. Once this front is defined, you can then measure how far any given tree falls from it, as shown by the red cross. What the authors conclude from their work is that neural arbors are much closer to being Pareto optimal than you would expect by chance, which suggests that neuron structure is not random, but strikes a balance between optimizing wiring cost and conduction delays. So how does this sort of structure impact computation? Frankly, that's an open question. So rather than giving you an answer, I'm just gonna give you one example of the type of work which people are pursuing in this direction. Here, the authors model a single neuron and study how changing the properties of its dendritic tree, which again process its inputs, 
alters its ability to solve classic machine learning benchmarks like MNIST. Shown on the left here is an outline of a real neuron. Its cell body is marked in pink, and the black lines show its dendritic tree. From examining these trees, researchers have found two interesting features, their branched morphology and repeated inputs. These features are shown schematically in the middle. Here we have a single neuron with its soma in pink, an output axon, and four numbered inputs in dark blue with its dendritic tree. As you can see, these inputs are divided into two branches, and this structure is repeated across subtrees, which are shown in light blue. So in this paper, the authors study how altering the structure of this tree, which they call a K-tree neuron model, impacts task performance. As a lower bound, they use a linear point neuron model, and as an upper bound, they use a fully connected neural network with the same number of trainable parameters. What they conclude is that the performance of their tree model improves as you increase k, the number of repeated subtrees, but starts to degrade when you make the trees more realistic by making them asymmetrical. What that suggests is that there's still lots to explore in this space of exactly how structure impacts computation. Okay, so that's all for neuron structure. In the next video, we'll move on to neuron function.